Hey there everybody, this is Amanda Dills and in this video I'm going to show you how to create an interactive digital escape room using a combination of Google Slides, Forms, Docs, and YouTube. Now you're probably already familiar with the concept of what an escape room is in real life. It's basically an attraction that people pay money to go and get locked in a room with their friends and solve a bunch of puzzles and find clues that lead them to a code that unlocks the door so they can get out in a set amount of time. Um, people have been doing digital versions of these for a while using Google Forms. There's some really cool examples. I'll link at least one down in the comments. But I was inspired by both the escape room concept and by some really cool interactive classrooms I've seen teachers create using Google Slides where they link to various resources and different things within a Google Slide and then make it like a classroom. And I thought it would be so cool to combine that with an escape room. And so the result is a digital interactive escape room like you see on the screen and I'm gonna show you how I do it. But first I just wanna give you a bit of a tour on what this actually is. So when you click on the link to this escape room, you can start a clock and then it looks kind of just like a picture, but it's full of different links that you click on and it brings up different documents that you can read. If you click on the lock here, this is what students have to click use to actually get out of the escape room. Um, and then they lead to some different videos and some different things. So that is what this is. And now I'm going to show you how to make it. A couple of disclaimers first. I'm not really going to go into like puzzle narrative creation in this video. I'm really just going to focus primarily on the tech. It's also going to be a pretty speedy overview. I will link to some of the more detailed tutorials that I used for inspiration and help in doing this. If you want a little bit more detailed information, definitely check those out. Um, I'm also not going to go into a ton of like basics of Google Slides. I'm going to assume you're at least a little bit familiar with the Google verse and just really talk about the tech specifics for how I created a room like this. So let's dive in. On the tech side, to make this digital escape room, there are really six different elements that I'm going to show you how to create. First, you need a room created with Google Slides. You need a lock that's created with a Google form. So something like what you see on the screen there. You need clues, which are the different things that when students click on them, um, it takes them to riddles or videos or different things there. Um, you also need links to those clues in the room. And I've got kind of a cool thing I'll show you for creating hidden links within the room. You also need a timer if you want them to have a time limit. And then you also need a link that's going to let the students, when they click on it, instantly go to the presentation view of this slide that makes it really just feel like a cool website and it doesn't feel like they're going into a PowerPoint or a slide in any way. So let's break each of these six things down. And I'm going to switch back to my view of this so we can look at the back end. Okay, now you are looking at the back end of my Google Drive. And the first thing I would recommend that you do is just create a folder there where you can put all of this stuff just to keep yourself organized. Um, I do like to start maybe with like a brainstorming document. You're going to want a place to keep links. But this is also then where you can put all the different clues and documents that you create. Um, but the first thing I'm going to show you is the actual slide for the classroom. So here's what this looks like on the back end. This is literally just a single Google slide and I'm gonna use a blank second slide to kind of recreate what I did here. Um, you can find lots of really great tutorials for creating virtual classrooms and that's essentially the technique that we're doing but I'll just point out a couple of things. One, you definitely wanna include your background image which is this big picture that you see back here as a background. So in order to do that, you'd first download the picture onto your computer and then you click on background and you can choose your image and I will just make this image pop up. Okay, and this is a picture that I had saved onto my computer already and I'm just gonna drag it in to be my background image. And then when I say done, it's there and I can't edit it, I can't move it around. It doesn't act like a layer, it just acts like a background and that makes my life a little bit easier. Um, you can also add anything into this you want. If you see back on here, I have lots of pictures and those things all kind of become the clues. Um, the way you add an image is just going here to insert and go image. And then the easiest thing to do is search the web. Um, a tip, great tip for doing that is if you add the words transparent or PNG into your search, and let's say I just wanna search for a chair, 
What that's going to do is it's going to pull up pictures that don't have a background so you won't see like that white square around them. It's just going to be the actual item that you want. See how there's like no white square behind it. That's because I was searching for transparent or PNG. So that's how you add different elements to it. Um, if you want to add your little face, this is a Bitmoji face. And a great tip I learned for doing that is if you download the Bitmoji Chrome browser extension, then I can click here and it's gonna pull up my Bitmoji account. So you do have to go to the Bitmoji app, actually create your account, set that up. That's a whole kind of separate thing. But if that's something you already have, I can do a search for let's say music and I can add this little Bitmoji into my room by copying and pasting very easily if I have that Bitmoji browser extension added. So those are just a couple of fun things not really related to the escape room that you may want to add. But basically it's a Google slide with a background that creates the room. The second thing we need to create is the lock. So back to my live example here. Um, when the students click on the lock of the door, it's taking them to a Google form. And again, I'm not going to go too much into like form specifics, but just to show you what this looks like on the back end. This is a Google form where I re-uploaded that background picture here as the, as the slide. So that happens here in the customize a theme area. I can upload a header. Um, I create a little introduction. I create a question. And probably the most important thing is turning on response validation for my question. So it's a short answer question where the students would type the code that whatever the code you want them to do. But in this little three dot menu, there's a response validation option. And what that does is it makes it function so that if I type in the wrong code, it gives them an uh oh message and kind of tells them to go back to look to the room for clues. But if they do type in the right code, then it kicks them to the next page and it brings up, there'll be a picture that pops up here. Yep, a little picture that I added that says lock opened. And then on this particular example, I have people tell me how much time was left on the clock when they solved the puzzle and submitted it. Otherwise, they don't necessarily have to submit anything to you for that response validation to work, um, which is kind of nice. It just makes it feel a little bit more like a website. So big thing when you're creating your form is response validation. And again, I'll link to a tutorial where I learned how to do this just to give you a little bit more information. So that is the lock. We've created the room, we've created the lock. You also wanna find or create different clues. And without going too much into, I don't know, escape room puzzle creation, I like to think of having both direct and indirect clues. And so for this puzzle, the kind of main direct clue was a riddle. Um, and if you can figure out the riddle and kind of figure out what these words are, then that will help you answer the code to the door. Um, so that was like my main clue. This is just a Google document that I shared as a link. And then I'll show you how to do that link in a second. So it's a Google Doc where if you click share, it's set up that anyone with the link can view. And so that's the link that I'm going to put in to my PowerPoint. Um, and I have a couple of those as kind of my direct clues. Another fun thing that I did in this particular room is I have indirect clues. So there are other things you can click on that I didn't create, but I just went and found videos on YouTube that kind of tie in um, indirectly. So like here, if the students click, oh, I'll just pull it up on the live one. Um, if the students click here on this particular picture, it just takes to a YouTube video that I found that ties in to the theme of what I'm trying to have them learn, but it I didn't create it, it's just something I found. So direct and indirect clues that you can create, you'll wanna collect those you know, on a document or something as you go. And then the next piece is making the links to these particular clues. And this is where I do something that I had to kind of figure out that's kind of fun to make those links kind of hidden. So a couple ways you can go about doing this. Let's say in this particular room, I wanted this chair to link to a clue. I can click on the chair. I can hit insert link. And then I can just paste the link for what I want there. So let's just pull a link and paste it in and make that say view and hit apply. Okay, so now on the live version of this, 
students could click anywhere on this chair, kind of anywhere in the, inside that box, and they could instantly go to whatever clue I had set up for them to view. Um, one other kind of fun trick, let's say I wanted to make the whole door here a clickable clue. Well, that door is not an individual item, so I have to actually create the link a different way. So how you do that is you go here to the shape option, you just pick the sh closest shape you can find, so in this case it's a rectangle, and you just draw it over where you want this link to go. While it's still nice and ugly and visible, you're gonna turn that into a link, so I'll just paste that same one here for now. But then the important thing is making sure that we don't want that big white box there, we wanna see the door. So when I have clicked on it so that box is selected, I can then go up to the fill color, make the fill color transparent, click on this little pencil for the border color, make the border color transparent. Now it doesn't show up, but there is a shape there that links to whatever item I set. So, so far we've created the room, we have puts a few items in it, we have collected and gotten all our clues ready to go, and now we've learned how to make links to those clues appear, whether it's with objects we've already added or by creating an invisible shape that can be the link, okay? The fifth element to this room that's kind of fun is the timer. Um, that's a really crucial part of real life escape rooms, um, and it may or may not always be appropriate for what you're doing, but it's very easy to add one in. And you're gonna do that just by adding in a video because there are tons of countdown videos on YouTube that you can just simply embed. So I'm gonna click on video. Let's say I wanted this particular timer maybe to be 60 minutes. I want them to have an hour. I'm just gonna do a search here for 60 minute timer. And then there's tons of options. Now you probably you know wanna check these, make sure they're appropriate, all of that stuff. But for now, let's just pick the first one that comes up and hit select. And then look at some of these options. I would definitely want it to autoplay when presenting. Um, and I can put a shadow on it. I can kind of tweak it in a lot of different ways. Um, for now, I'm gonna mute the audio just so it doesn't distract from this video. Um, and I'm gonna close that out. And then I want this to look like a clock on the wall. So I'm just gonna shrink the little shape down. And let's see if I can just present this. When this plays, and I you know you're only seeing a part of the screen, um, it's gonna just have that timer that's counting down there right in that little YouTube video. So that is how to create the timer. So, so far we've created a room, we've put a few fun things in it, we've created our clues, we've added them, we've added our timer. The last technical element that you're gonna to wanna to do in this is a way to have it so that when students click on the link to this room, it just instantly goes to your presentation. You don't want it to look like a PowerPoint or look like Google Slides. If I go back to this one, when you click right on that link, it just takes you instantly to this and it looks kind of like a cool interactive website. So how you go about creating this is a bit of a hack. Um, you don't do the normal sharing options. What you do instead is you open up the slide that you want, you pull the URL from the top of your slide and copy that. And just to kind of show you what this looks like, I'll just add a blank slide with a text box just so you can see what I'm doing here with the text. And I'll make that nice and big. Okay, so this is the link that comes here. Instead of edit, you're just gonna change this text where it says edit, you're gonna change that to preview and hit apply. Now, if I take this particular link, I'm gonna copy it, um, and I'm gonna go back to, I have an incognito window open where I'm not logged in just to show you um, what it looks like when you're not logged into the account. But if I put that link with preview in there, and I click on it, it instantly goes to a preview that auto starts playing. It doesn't look like a slideshow, it's instantly in preview mode. So this is a really easy way to share that link, especially if you're sharing it with people that you don't want them to like get in and manipulate anything, you just want them to play the escape room. That's a way you can do it. So that really concludes this tutorial. 
like I said, if you have questions about any elements of this, um, definitely ask them in the comments below this video. I can add them as either answers in the comments or I can create some follow-up videos. I think this is a really fun thing. I've really enjoyed doing it. So I'm happy to sort of talk about it more and brainstorm different ideas in different ways that you might go about creating an interactive escape room. So have fun. Um, happy escape room creating.